welcome to 12th class students in this video we will study about origin of life as many theories were given for origin of life one of the most accepted theory was chemical origin of life and this theory was given by operan and herden and proved by miller and ure this video deals with the same experiment let us learn about chemical theory given by operan and herden universe and the origin of solar system it is believed that the cosmos which comprises all material of reality originated 10 to 20 billion years ago the prevalent view is that cosmos originated with massive explosion of tightly condensed matter billions of years ago the big bang theory states that singular huge explosion unimaginable in physical terms the universe expanded and hence the temperature came down hydrogen and helium formed later the gases condensed under gravitational form and the galaxies of the present day universe huge cluster of galaxies comprise the universe galaxies contain stars cloud of gases and dust cosmologists have estimated that there are approximately 100000 million galaxies all galaxies are moving from one another at the speed of approaching the speed of light our galaxy is the milky way just one of the galaxies all the stars that we can see with naked eyes belong to the galaxy the sun is a medium sized star lying about two third of the way from the center of the milky way the sun and its planetary satellites make up the solar system in the solar system of the milky way galaxy earth is supposed to have been formed 4.5 years back and thus various theories have been given for the origin of life on the earth let us see what are those theories origin of life on the earth life is the most complex and ordered state of organization that matter has achieved in our universe the origin of life is a fascinating and perhaps an unique event in the history of nature how did life originated on the earth in order to explain it number of views have been expressed from time to time most of these views are quite bizarre with only a historical significance the major theories accounting for the origin of life on the earth are as follows number 1 theory of special creation number 2 theory of spontaneous generation 3 theory of biogenesis four steady state theory cosmic theory biochemical origin of life in this presentation in this video we will discuss about biochemical origin of life which was given by operan and herden and it was proved by miller and ure and thus it is called as miller ure's experiment next we will learn about this experiment in this module you will learn about the origin of life looking at the pictures of these extinct prehistoric animals it is difficult to believe that they had once walked on our planet in fact the earth and its numerous life forms were originally different to understand the changes in life forms on earth over millions of years 
we need to know how life originated. The origin of life forms or biodiversity is interlinked with the evolution of the earth, which is again closely associated with the evolution of the universe. The universe is vast, comprises many galaxies and is almost 20 billion years old. The Big Bang Theory attempts to explain the origin of the universe. According to this theory, a singular huge explosion caused the infinitesimally small, hot and dense universe to expand, which resulted in the lowering of temperatures. It even states that the universe continues to expand even today. After the passage of time, gases such as hydrogen and helium got formed. They condensed due to gravitation and gave rise to different galaxies in the universe. One of the galaxies known to us is the Milky Way, which contains the solar system and the Earth is one of the planets in the system. At the time of its formation, there was no atmosphere on the Earth. Its surface was covered by water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide and ammonia released from the molten mass. Gradually, the ultraviolet rays of the sun broke up the water, which was in vapor state, into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, being a lighter gas than oxygen, escaped. Thereafter, oxygen combined with ammonia and methane which led to the formation of water, carbon dioxide and other gases. The high energy ultraviolet rays of the sun struck the oxygen molecule and split it into oxygen atoms, which in turn reacted with other oxygen molecules to form ozone, and thus the ozone layer was formed. Some of the water vapor cooled and came down as rain which filled all the deep depressions on the Earth and formed oceans. It is estimated that life appeared on Earth 500 million years after its formation. There are different theories that try to explain the beginning of life on Earth. Some of them are panspermia, spontaneous generation, biogenesis and chemical evolution. Panspermia is the oldest theory founded by Greek thinkers. It explains that units of life called spores were transferred to different planets. Panspermia assumes that seeds of life exist all over the universe. Therefore, the life on Earth may have originated after one such seed was deposited on the Earth from somewhere in the universe. This theory generates much interest even today. Another belief was that life arose from inanimate things. The theory of spontaneous generation assumed that life came out of non-living, decaying and rotting matter such as stones, straw and mud. Even famous Greek thinker and philosopher Aristotle believed in this theory. In fact, this theory was used to explain even Anton von Leeuwenhoek's findings of animalcules using the simple microscope. Moreover, some scientists such as John Needham supported the theory of spontaneous generation by conducting some experiments. In one of his experiments, Needham boiled chicken broth in a flask and then cooled it to room temperature in an open container. Later, he sealed this container. After a few days, he observed a few microbes in it. Needham believed that some life force had brought about this spontaneous generation in the chicken broth. The theory of spontaneous generation was in vogue until a German biologist, 
Rudolf Virchow challenged it with his theory called Omnis Cellular Acellular, which expounded that living cells can arise from pre-existing cells. However, he could not prove this theory of biogenesis. Later on, Louis Pasteur, with his experiments, proved the theory of biogenesis and forever silenced the advocates of spontaneous generation. In his experiment, he used pre-sterilized sealed flasks with killed yeast. These flasks did not show any signs of life. On the contrary, in another flask, he exposed killed yeast to air. Surprisingly, living organisms were found in this flask. Another theory, called the theory of chemical evolution, was expounded by Russian scientist Alexander Ivanovich Operin and British scientist John Burden Sanderson Haldane. They proposed that the first form of life originated from pre-existing non-living organic molecules such as RNA and protein. They also pointed out that the birth of life was preceded by chemical evolution or the formation of diverse organic molecules from inorganic constituents. When the earth was created, the conditions were high temperature, volcanic storms and reducing atmosphere consisting of methane and ammonia. In 1953, American scientist Stanley Lloyd Miller recreated these conditions in a laboratory. He created an electric discharge in a closed flask containing methane, ammonia, hydrogen and water vapor at 800 degrees centigrade and observed the formation of amino acids. Later on, while conducting similar experiments, other scientists observed the formation of sugars, nitrogen bases, pigment, and fats as well. Interestingly, when meteorite content was analyzed, similar compounds were found in them, which proved that similar processes occurred in other parts of the universe as well. Thereafter, the theory of chemical evolution was most widely accepted. However, there were still doubts about how the first cell came into existence. Cellular forms of life originated around 2,000 million years ago as unicellular organisms in water. It is probable that all life forms originated in a water environment. This theory of chemical evolution, which explains that first life forms arose from non-living molecules through evolutionary forces, is now widely accepted. However, the origin of life is a fascinating and curious topic which will forever invite a lot of debate and speculation. You have now reached the end of this module. In this module, you learnt that the origin of life is interlinked with the evolution of the Earth, which is linked with the evolution of the universe. The universe is vast and comprises many galaxies and is almost 20 billion years old. The Big Bang Theory refers to a singular huge explosion which caused the infinitesimally small, hot and dense universe to expand and then cool. Panspermia is the oldest theory expounded by the Greeks, which assumes that units of life called spores were transferred to different planets. The theory of spontaneous generation believed that life came out of decaying and rotting matter such as straw and mud. Louis Pasteur founded the theory of biogenesis, which explains that life comes only out of pre-existing life. The theory of chemical evolution, 
which states that the first life forms arose from non-living molecules through evolutionary forces, is now widely accepted. Children, welcome to our bio class by Kalpana Trivedi. In this session, we will study Stanley Huda's experiment from evolution, chapter of class 12. Children, up till now, we have studied that how origin of life it took place. Various theories were given that how origin of life came on the earth. The first theory we studied was special theory creation, then theory of the spontaneous generation that is abiogenesis or autobiogenesis theory, then theory of biogenesis came into existence, then steady state theory, cosmic theory, biochemical theory. These were some of the theories. This biochemical theory was considered as the most appropriate theory and this theory was given by Opre and Herde. The same theory was proved to by Miller and Urey's experiment. This experiment of Stanley Miller and Herald Urey was based on abiotic origin of biomolecules and they proved the concept of Opre and Herde theory of origin of life. They recreated the proper conditions on the primitive earth in the laboratory. As we can see in our diagram, they designed a spark discharge apparatus. To that, two tungsten electrodes were connected by the electric source, which were fitted to a large class to provide energy of electric discharge, stimulating the effect of lightning of primitive atmosphere. The larger flask was connected to a small U-tube by means of a straight tube which is visible in our diagram. Passing through a condenser and atmosphere containing hydrogen, ammonia, methane and water vapor was created in one of the chambers and condensed liquids were allowed to accumulate in another chamber as we can see in our diagram. Then energy was supplied by heating the liquid containing chamber as well as by electric spark that is seen from the electrodes in gaseous chamber. With the help of this simple apparatus, they showed that amino acids like lysine, alanine and aspartic acid and even more complex organic compounds can be formed. In vitro, when the mixture of water vapor, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen gases in a closed chamber are subjected to electric discharge, as the energy was given by sun on the earth in the same way they created with the spark. For a few days, this experiment thus confirmed the possibility of abiogenic synthesis of various organic compounds from the reducing mixture of simple gases. This experiment also indicated that a reducing atmosphere is essential for abiotic synthesis and free oxygen could destroy most intermediate products in such synthesis because of oxidation of substances will take place. The presence of free oxygen and living organism on the earth at present are considered to prevent the abiotic region of life. This suggests that life originally arose from inorganic molecules on the primitive earth, but 